All right, welcome back to the Pine Wheel Room. I'm your urban eco master. Today I want to talk to you about the crystal gates or the crystal needy. And what do I really mean by the crystal gates? I'm talking about biology now. Because what happens within the body also happens outside so i want to make this correlation very very clearly now i'm going to talk about nanoparticles or nanoorganisms and in this case i'm going to talk about nanobacteria the, the primary source for the formation of crystal gates in the body now these crystal gates are what i call you know stones they eventually form stones because crystals have a way of collecting ions and other minerals onto their surface over time and this can you know shift it from being a crystal um, in appearance to more of a solid structure more looking like a stone so we can have crystal formations in different tissues of the body or organs of the the body and they eventually become um, stones so we hear about the kidney stones gallbladder stones we hear about stones in the eustachian tube of course and causing tinnitus we hear about all these crystal stones forming into the eyes causing cataract glaucoma or into the nasal passage causing sinusitis or into the tonsil causing the inflammation and the swelling the stone can also form in the gallbladder that produces that that secretes the, the bile and it can also form in the the, the the liver itself which is not often studied so these crystals can deposit nucleate and form um, crystals and stones in these different areas of the, the body. It can also, these stones can also be formed in the appendix, right? And uh, we know that, that that can also cause a serious problems. But what the takeaway is, anywhere in the body that blood runs to, there is the possibility of stones or crystals being formed but how what is the cause what is the cause of this thing like i'm telling you we all exist with many microorganisms within the body naturally and also we have been contaminated by also nano organism outside of the body and the, the this infection can be as a result of say consuming things like dairy products you know um cow blood from eating the beef these things can be caused from blood exchange so these are primary ways you know of, of contacting these nano organisms but of course, naturally, we have we have also been created with these um, nano microorganisms as well to help protect the body from the harmful nano um, bacteria or organisms. Now, when we look at vegan, the vegan diet, the meat eater diet, or these guys that are referred to as omnivores, they eat. Pretty much everything what we realize is that all these three categories of people are highly prone to um, crystal formation regardless of the diet all right so we definitely have to look deeper on a cellular level the cause now I have been following the literature for some time now and there have been a lot of speculations, but now we are, you know, 
becoming more what I would want to say more convincing that these crystal gates are crystal needy you know are actually formed from a type of nanobacteria and this bacteria requires a certain calcium to nucleate this crystal gate to start forming crystals throughout the body so there's this nano bacteria that is responsible for crystallization because they act as the crystal center or the crystal needy right for crystallization to occur and crystallization is really calcification in the simplest term no all of us are prone to calcification but how like i say the three categories of diet vegan meat eater or your omnivore you're all prone to calcification how look at it now if you're a vegan that means your diet is predominantly plant-based right this simply means that your diet is challenged with excess phytic acid or say oxalic acid because these are plant-based acids and if you look at the structure of these compounds are how they behave they behave somewhat like a, like chelators one example of a chelator is edta they are like chelators they will these acids will pick up certain ions for example if you have excess calcium floating around in the blood calcium phosphate floating around in the blood phytic acid from these vegan um, diet or oxalic acid can pick up this excess calcium in the blood and when phytic acid picks up calcium this acid is no longer acid this calcium is no longer calcium but this is what is called calcium phytate or if it picks up if if oxalic acid picks up calcium it is calcium oxalate this is the first formation of the crystal this is the formation of a crystal right and over time this crystal can collect deposits from the blood or wherever it is in the tissue and eventually grow into a stone watch me now where is this calcium coming from that is sitting around in the blood floating around in the blood where is it coming from if we are saying that we are suffering from acidosis where is as excess calcium coming from in in the, in the blood of every human being on the, on the on the earth follow me now have you ever boiled a kettle of water or a pot with water for say 35 to 40 minutes continuously boil that pot of water and as you boil that pot of water, you realize that there are some white scales being formed around the outer lining of the pot. As you boil the water and the water reduces, these scales, you know, precipitate. This is what we call calcification, right? Precipitation of, of crystals. And this compound that is precipitated on the side of the pot is generally a crude compound of calcium phosphate right this solid substance that they said also makes up the bone hold this point now as i said bone let us go back to the body in the body the bone holds a cement like compound called calcium phosphate same thing in your wall you know you use it below wall too it makes the bone very 